Here we are, nine minutes past the hour on our emergency channels, uh, no longer on our main channel. Uh, next week, uh, we will be launching, by the way, a new channel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we are preparing it and it's gonna be a new the Leo Zagami show channel because remember every time we reach 5,000 subscribers they punctually start picking on us until they bring us down so uh, we are only really a uh, few people today here on these emergency oh, channels no. uh, but the problem is mainly that people don't listen People don't listen, you see, because I, how many times did I say to to all of our audience, please subscribe to the emergency channels? How many? How many times? Every time you come on here. Yes, and nobody listens. So uh, I'm doing this show mainly for our friends uh, who have contributed, and. Uh, do we really only have four people? Yes. Okay. So we want to thank Bruce Kodish, Pina Giuseppina Cairo, Ellen Socrates. Franek242 and Jeffrey Giampalmi to, uh, for supporting and sponsoring this show today. Uh, these are really special people who make it uh, possible. So uh, for them, of course, we have uh, prepared an applause session. <laughs> yes, yes, we have an applause session for our sponsors. Here we are, go! To you today, bye. Bye. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> and, and, and so thank you again to Bruce uh, Body, who has made this possible together with Ellen uh, Socrates, Pranic242, and Jeffrey Giampalmi. Thank you so much. Yes. So uh, that's uh, uh, for our sponsors. And now, of course, 11 minutes past the hour here in Palm Springs is uh, 11 minutes past 10 o'clock in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. We have a lot of news to cover, so let's start quickly. Please uh, uh, share this video on your social networks of choice. Next week, we are launching a new channel because next week also we will be back on Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that means that we will have uh, uh, another way of promoting uh, because the, the shadow banning, the censorship, uh, the removal of our channels make it uh, literally impossible to, to have uh, this show uh, broadcast. But we're trying to survive. We also, of course, uh, uh, once we launch the YouTube channel, our next move will be to also upload the content uh, on Beach Shoot and Rumble. Um, so let's uh, start with the news of the day. We have so much news. Casey, we also have some fashion news. Really? Yes, yeah, so Linda Evangelista. Linda Evangelista, yes, uh, you know, that famous top model of the 80s and 90s, yeah, right. seems to have screwed up her face. Uh, once upon a time, she was a beautiful creature. It doesn't seem that's uh, no longer because, yes, she did. well, she did something called uh, losing, I mean, she did cool sculpting. I don't know what is cool sculpting. I, I really cool, don't. Cool sculpting. Cool scu sculpting, yes. I'm I have is. no idea. What but, do they uh, do it with like? Well, did you read it though? Yes, I read about it, and you can see also our viewers can read about it. <laughs> but what is it? Basically, it's. Uh, it's, what, it's what does she do? Uh, she says she had been brutally disfigured by a non invasive body contouring procedure with Celtic cool sculpting. No, don't ask me because I don't know anything about this kind of thing. Oh. Uh, um, in the evangelista once upon a time now oh, of course she will uh, present herself with a new look sad that these people you know ruin the, the beautiful and then they ruin their faces uh, i want to thank also they should do face your mm. really yes <laughs> they should. and uh, of course uh, for those who want to support the show we have the hardback copy and the paperback copy of the book of the moment volume seven is really the book that says it all uh, i mean this book uh, it, it, it's, it's almost prophetic it's almost prophetic but yeah i just want to uh, read you uh, just a little passage uh, from uh, uh, from this book to make you understand uh, uh, how prophetic volume seven is uh, christy because mm -hmm. uh, we, we have uh, really so much material on this book that people should check out 
I know that uh, uh, my uh, friend Alex Jones has also done a book on the Great Reset, but uh, of course uh, I preceded him and my book was of course uh, in the charts, uh, especially uh, when it came, uh, came down to Amazon. I must say we had a lot of success yeah. with a book that uh, um, I think, uh, like I said, has almost a prophetic tone. For example, I uh, discuss uh, uh, Ron DeSantis, saying that personally that will be my favorite choice, even if, of course, I uh, respect very much uh, uh, Trump and the work that he has done. But, like I said, we don't uh, want to go into the politics here of it, but, uh, of course, this is a book that uh, describes that whoever really will try to take control of uh, uh, the, the the next uh, uh, seat in the White House will have some problems. In fact, the passage which I would like to read from uh, uh, my book is the following. The nightmare that started in 2020. And of course, uh, this uh, uh, is uh, uh, a citation from a book. So, the nightmare that started in 2020 is not going away in 2022 or in 2023 or even in 2024. If Trump is back in the office, of course, I will always prefer Trump or personally DeSantis over Biden. But it should be obvious to everybody by now that 2020 was the year zero for the league's big move towards what they call the Great Reset. All things will only get worse for humanity regardless of who is in power in the political realm. So uh, regardless uh, the, the, of... Oh, it's the it's air conditioning. Yeah. Down to what? Because uh, it doesn't seem to be very down to me. What was 69, it? 69, right? Put it 68. No, I just did. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, okay. Welcome, 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 everybody. Um, there's only 12 people. But only 12 people. I mean, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care because those people are special to us. But why don't people listen? Why don't people listen? When we say we will be censored soon on, on the main channel, please subscribe to the emergency channels. Oh, no, my necklace. Yesterday, I did the same thing on my Italian uh, show, emergency broadcast on my emergency channels, and I managed to have 300 oh, people. people in live chat within the matter of uh, an hour or so. And uh, usually we have, of course, five, 600 people, but at least 300 people sh showed up. In the English speaking channel instead, I'm talking to 15 people. I mean, guys, you have to understand that uh, for a professional who has been doing this for decades, who is working on important books uh, to save humanity, to actually have only a few people, uh, like 12, where are we? I mean, I have the disciples of Christ. <laughs> okay, better than nothing. Let's... You guys are really, really, really special. Very special. Okay, so let's move At forward. At least we all yes. get it. <laughs> well, where is here gets it. Uh, well, uh, the anyway? telepandemia said, unfortunately, Italians don't understand. Well, I think Americans are even worse because, <laughs> I mean, at least the Italians were a few hundred yesterday. <laughs> okay. So this week uh, we have a lot of news, but of course the news of the week that made the, uh, the, 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 the news more than other news was this uh, flash mob uh, takeover of uh, a convenience store in El Segundo that uh, of course it's... it's These people are Americans who enter 7-Eleven and ransack it after they organize a flash mob, this is more of a steel mob, on the social media. I don't want to be racist here. I don't want to be racist. They're, whoever they are, they're acting like animals. Yes. Uh, I don't see, though, any white supremacists amongst them, Christine. Um, I don't see actually any white people amongst them. 
No. I don't want to be racist, guys, but unfortunately, this needs to stop. They are destroying a country that used to be a jewel of uh, uh, democracy, of constitution, a constitutional republic that definitely was never entrenched in the last few decades uh, in racism and all that. Uh, but now they have fomented racism with all the racial theories, uh, then the gender theories. Uh, we all have to discuss the sexuality of everybody like it's, a, it's an important thing. And all these things, of course, in the end, have uh, gradually undermined what, what used to be once a beautiful country. This is the reality of it, a country that unfortunately is under attack and it's undermined willingly by the left, in course, though, with the, the right, with the conservatives that don't do anything really to stop all this. I mean, of course, what, what, what should they do? Should, they should win the midterm elections. But when you see what kind of candidates, like Dr. Oz is, is kind of losing and in a state which was actually an easy one. Why did Well, Trump support this him? joke of a man. I mean, I don't understand. I don't know. I mean, this is crazy. But however, apart from that, uh, we know that the DNA of the Republican Party has been regenerated definitely by Donald J. Trump. And uh, even if he, he doesn't run, because we don't really know if either Trump or DeSantis will run uh, for the next presidential elections yet. They so must not know. No matter the endorsements uh, that. Uh, these, uh, these people can give. I mean, th they are not yet uh, on the list because first, the, the first thing to sort out is the midterm elections. And these midterm elections are definitely very important for America. But will they change something? Will they change something? When, when, when we see, though, the, 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 the level of decadence of the democratic cities. And, and uh, yesterday we were talking in private uh, about New York, and you said, well, nobody cares about politics in New York. But that's what they want. That's what they want. They don't want you to take care about politics like uh, they do in the middle of the country, because these cities are now completely in the hands of Satan. And I told you in my book, you have to abandon the big cities because there is no hope for them. Look what happens uh, in North Portland. Look what happens in, in North Portland. For sale signs line what were once sought after neighborhoods in North Portland. It makes you not feel that great about living here. Many families are moving out of the city, escaping the homelessness and crime that's taking over the streets. It makes living in the neighborhood harder and just not as congenial as it could be. Greg Dilks has lived in North Portland for 30 years and says homeless camps along the Peninsula Crossing Trail near his home have changed the area. It's the first time in a long time that we've actually seriously thought about moving. Mental health, drug addiction, and just not having access to housing. Mark's okay, this happens all over the United States. It happens a lot here in California, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, even here in Palm Springs. And uh, this is because the people in power want the cities to literally devaluate uh, uh, the cities to be gradually maybe even abandoned because this is what's happening here. So they then can bring in their, uh, their uh, real estate and buy everything very cheap. And then of course, reconstruct everything in the name of smartness, uh, smartness, smart cities where everything is monitored, controlled, checked, where you can be secure, where you will not have any more all these problems. And in the meantime, this is what's happening in Portland. Smith and Maria Innocencio share a backyard with the camp. They often don't feel safe walking alone or tending to their gardens. Every day, you know, if you go from one end of the street to the other, you're, you know, you're, you're confronting some very difficult situations, people in really dire straits. It's a little scary because I know there is mental illness and I, that concerns me. We are the most harmless, harmless people you'll ever meet. TT Sanchez lives in one of the camps along the Peninsula Crossing Trail. They shouldn't be scared of us for what? Because we're, we live outside. Like, that's the reason why you should be scared of us because we live outside. 
So if we lived in four wall in the house and stuff, would you still be scared of this? A handful of for sale signs like this one are posted in front of several homes in North Portland. We're told at least three families here along McKenna Avenue are leaving, all due to nearby homeless camps. I would say the migration to the suburbs I've seen quite a bit in the last two years. Real estate broker Lauren Iaquinta sees it firsthand. Most people don't want to have to worry about if they can leave their car parked in their driveway overnight without maybe having it broken into. Um, it's a it's a pretty testy subject. Now, when working with clients in Portland, she vets the neighborhoods, checking for nearby homeless campers. It's neighborhood by neighborhood. You can be driving through North Portland and you're in this lovely area where there's no issues and then you kind of can make a turn around the corner and have homeless camps there. It's kind of sad. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years here in Portland and it's it's changed quite a bit. The city plans to build a safe for us village along that trail, the peninsula crossing, where many of the campers in that area could go. But there's no timeline yet on when that project will be completed. And it's only temporary, so it'll only be around for about three years. But after that, there are plans to build a permanent affordable housing complex to take its place. Blair uh, Bell. The permanent affordable housing complex, uh, at that point everybody will be broke and uh, this uh, permanent affordable housing complex will have a thousand cameras you will be microchipped to enter the area or you will have to take i don't know how many vaccines uh, to be able to exit to it so that's what's happening here in america today and uh, while everybody's focusing on trivial the, the actual problem at the border is intensifying and it is intensifying in a way that really leaves us uh, uh, perplexed because uh, there is a policy that is obviously indulging the people to flood the, the frontier when uh, you know you have uh, basically uh, the, the agents who are there opening the gates. This is an incredible scene that has been circulating this week. This is the Leo Zagami show, a rundown of uh, our weekly news. So people like me, people who have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in lawyers, who are still waiting for their citizenship, who are basically struggling to, to, to make a living legally and to be able to legally become an American citizen, have to see this kind of thing. Now, these people will end up enriching the, the, the poverty and the desperation of uh, the suburban uh, areas of America. And that's uh, going to be, of course, uh, more fuel to add to the fire. And if you think that uh, that was the end of the line, no, it wasn't, unfortunately. Uh, the lines are really very big. Uh, we are talking here about millions of people entering the country each year, which is really an incredible amount of people, if you think about it. Here, uh, a Fox News correspondent showing just uh, how many people in line crossing into the country. Gosh. They're destroying this country. And they're destroying America and they are making America not great again. I mean, the Democrats are the ones who are making America a shithole that never was. So it's not a game. They are literally ruining it. And uh, of course, we are fighting here at the Leo Zagami show and we are showing you our weekly news. This is the Leo Zagami show on our emergency channels. Leo Zagami and Christy. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we forgot actually the introduction here. We didn't dance. Oh, we, <laughs> we need didn't dance. dance. Well, maybe we should uh, restart uh, with the dance. Live from Palm Springs, California, your host, 
Leo's got it. Here we go. <laughs> the Leo Zagami Show, our little weekly war rundown about uh, incredible news analysis. Uh, never we had uh, such a situation where we are basically broadcasting for our closest friends and a few others who are starting to tune in on our emergency channels. I hope that by next week, when we are back on Facebook and with the launch of our new official The Leo Zagami Show channel, we will have, of course, many, many subscribers. The channel is being prepared, it will be officially launched next week. Uh, and and so, mm. Hey, everybody. Everybody's watching me now. If you haven't done it already, go over there and hit Okay, so uh, let's move on. We have uh, yet uh, more news. Uh, we have started, of course, talking about the decline of America. Unfortunately, flash mobs, uh, people that invade this country illegally. And uh, of course, uh, all this uh, is it's, it's definitely a sign of uh, decadence. Uh, but this scene that I'm about to show you is really something else. A woman on meth in Oklahoma managed to free herself from the handcuffs, steal a machine gun, shoot on the officer, shoot on the yeah. <laughs> this is a, this is like a, the scene of a movie. Uh, Oklahoma woman on meth. Now it's, she's held now on a million bond after, uh, I mean, slipping out of, of handcuffs, grabbing a rifle, shooting a citizen and an officer from the back office of the car. The, the scene is literally the scene you can imagine from a movie. You, you, you will just think this is not possible in reality, but this is what is happening in this America that is increasingly more decline, decline, decline. It's, 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 it's all about decline. Chrissy, what do you think? Well, I definitely can see a difference in everything, in, in just in, in everything, in people that I see around me. Um, something's going on. If you can't see it, um, you're blind, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's really something going on with everyone. It's just weird. I think it's the, you know what? Mm. Well, yeah. I guess that that thing that they injected in people is not really helping. Uh, so here she is in the back of a police car. I don't know how. How did she get out of the handcuffs? Uh, well, no, maybe she had small hands. But the incredible thing is how these, uh, she got the machine gun. I mean, do they leave machine guns behind with the people there? No. And it's like this woman is supposed to be on mat. It's supposed to be. A woman that is confused, dragged, and now she takes on a machine gun and starts shooting to both an officer and a guy who is out there. I mean, it's incredible. It's, uh, of course, part of America's decadence. Here, here she, she Where gets, did she get that from? She just pulled it out from somewhere. <laughs> she pulled it out from somewhere. She's checking it That's out. That's weird. She knows how, definitely how to use it because, I mean, she must know how to use it, or in some way she managed. Um, this is for real. Yeah. And then she starts shooting with it. <sighs> and of course... Anyway, uh, I don't uh, understand why there was a machine gun in the back of a car. Yeah, I mean, just placed there. It's, it's incredible. I mean, well, this, then they deserve it. They're that dumb. Then she starts shooting. She's not that small, so I don't know how she got out of those those um I, I we don't really know, but definitely it's uh no no it's not fake. It's uh an official police video and uh, this is a show that doesn't uh, broadcast fake news. So so is she just trying to load it or what? <laughs> ah yes, so I mean it's it's like incredible, but I mean 
all this to just to, 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 to understand how the situation in this country, how bad. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, it's, 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 it's a shocking. Uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma police body camera video shows uh, this whole thing, and uh, uh, then this woman called Rachel Zion Clay, uh, Rachel Zion Clay, uh, that's her, her, her name, uh, open fire, hitting a civilian and a deputy, and uh, the, the man screamed, oh, well, of course, uh, after being <laughs> hit, uh, I mean, at least, uh, 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 shots continued as the man and two officers ran for cover behind another marked vehicle, the man soon ran over to help his father and officer rushed him to safety because there was this civilian that was hit uh, in this whole thing. The uh, Oklahoma authorities have uh, uh, released this uh, body cam video that shows uh, how she uh, freed her handcuffed and how she then got the machine gun and uh, started uh, shooting i mean it was you know it's long i mean you, you see the video is long so she must have been doing this for a long time but they didn't even check on her it's 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 a, it's really out of order it's it's crazy the grady county sheriff's office responded to a wellness check at a home in blanket just before noon on august 12 and the deputies took uh, this uh, woman in custody and placed her in handcuffs until uh, in the back of, of course, a uh, classic, you know, a Mark police uh, SUV. And at that point, she uh, loads it. Uh, I mean, she loads the rifle and then she starts shooting. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just uh, Incredible that they let her do all that. Nobody intervened while she was preparing the, 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 the gun. I mean, both victims were, of course, hospitalized with injuries that were not fortunately considered life-threatening, according to the authorities. And uh, the wounded man in the video, is uh, the wounded man's son was nearby and is seen then assisting. Uh, the, the first aid uh, as officers call for backup and for an ambulance, of course, in this uh, coincided uh, situation. This is the Leo Zagami show showing you more about America's uh, decadence in the age of Joe Biden. Now, ever so confused Joe Biden, who, of course, this week signed that demented uh, inflation act that would do nothing whatsoever for inflation. But let's uh, uh, see uh, for a moment uh, this uh, scene that, of course, uh, shows us once again a very confused joke. Yeah. 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 The pen, the bunch. I mean, he looks like. He... Well, let's watch it uh, in slow motion. Watch how. <sighs> How he is completely out of it. That's really completely out of it. Yes, completely out of it. He doesn't know what's going on. And his face. His face. Oh boy, we're in trouble. We are in so much trouble. So, this is basically Joe Biden this week signing an act that. Uh, in theory, it is made to prevent inflation, but uh, it's not going to do anything to prevent inflation. And uh, some say it will help the climate change. Well, it will not really help that much anything. And even that is uh, been proven to be completely false. So it's basically wasting money, throwing it out of the window, so that money can then come back in through the donors. You see, a lot of this money is addressed to people who donate to the Democratic Party. And because they have to donate for the midterm, because they have to donate for the presidential elections, and they don't have that much money, they do this whole procedure whereby they uh, create this act, pay a bunch of companies that are close to them uh, billions, and then they in turn give back those uh, part of that money with donations. Uh, and, and so this is basically what happens uh, with, uh, with, uh, with this whole farce. It, it's really incredible. Unfortunately, we are in the hands of 
almost a criminal enterprise here. Almost it is. A, almost a criminal enterprise, yes, unfortunately. Uh, they open the gates to the immigrants, so they uh, make these uh, cities in America, they transform them in a shit hole and all kinds of things. Now, on a positive note, uh, uh, positive, I mean, an unusual note, a few days ago here in California, this was seen above the skies. Oh my God, where's daddy? I don't know. Oh my God, I got goosebumps. Papa. Now, it could be uh, maybe the satellites launched by Elon Musk, uh, like in the past, we don't really know, but the people who were actually filming this at uh, one point say something interesting, showing that at least they realize what's happening in them times. Hey. Ah! Tell Jody and them. Are they lanterns? No. That is something that. What is that? Aliens? Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps. Yeah, I do too. I repeat that in the name of Jesus. That's right. Well, boy, you don't know what it is. Maybe it's something nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Our neighbors are outside too, wanting to know what it is. Don't worry. Oh, this is definitely going to be on the news. Yeah, yeah now it's dissipating. It's going away. Yeah, but they're, but they're, uh, the meteors? Jody said she thinks it's meteors. Those are not those meteors. Are not meteors. No, not Jody, meteors. those are not meteors. Those are not meteors. They Check work closer. Out. They're leaving. Where? They're like right over there. Oh. No, they work closer. Now they're farther away. There's like tons of them. Jody. What? In end times, there will be signs in the heavens. I'm on Christian TikTok. I think I know what they are. I think angels. In the next two years. Yeah. I th Wait, yeah. I know what they are. Signs. I know what they are. They're gone. They, they're, well, they're still so there. They're still there. They're farther away. Jody, I'm scared. It's okay, baby. Don't yeah. worry, it's angels. What is that? It's angels. That is, no, those aren't meteors, though. Yeah, those aren't meteors. Meteors be moving faster. I don't know what they're about, Bubba. They're starting to go away now. This happened uh, in California this week. Uh, welcome to the Leo Zagami show, where uh, we try to analyze the weekly news, uh, me and my wife, in this uh, show that has been, of course, uh, uh, censored and shadow banned and the subject of many limitations. Uh, imagine that from October 2020, we have 16 channels removed. 16, 16, 16 channels. So, of course, we ask you to share uh, this uh, video. We, of course, uh, want to thank our sponsors who made this uh, transmission possible today. And if you are interested in supporting us, you can do it through Fundly, GoFundMe, and all those means. Uh, we have also Cash App that you can find in the description of this video and uh, made possible for us uh, to uh, carry on our project at least every week uh, and uh, in the fall we will be starting hopefully uh, once the channel is strong again uh, we will be starting with some more regular uh, shows but this depends from you really it depends from the interest that people have in our work and in our show but uh, we uh, want definitely thank those people who made the effort to tune in uh, on the emergency channels today, which has not been an easy one. Uh, we have been the first people here on our show to talk about the importance of Zaporizhia, of the nuclear plant uh, in Ukraine, and what might happen. Now everybody's talking about it. Uh, on Friday, yesterday, uh, Macron, Putin, uh, they had a chat about, uh, of course, uh, I think uh, yesterday before, a chat by phone on uh, 
the, the, this uh, very complex matter of letting in the specters from the International Nuclear Agency. Uh, but the situation is really unclear because on one part you have the Ukrainians accusing the Russians of, may, of, of maybe creating a false flag to uh, which I don't see why the Russians should invade the territory and then nuke it uh, because that's what what, what if we, I mean if you if you uh, sabotage uh, the biggest uh, one of the ten biggest nuclear plants in the world you are basically it's almost like uh, throwing a nuclear bomb but that's not the case because it seems like instead it might be Ukraine more interested in in something like that so what is happening really here well, what is happening is uh, that uh, we are uh, witnessing uh, uh, Zelensky in crisis, Zelensky who uh, had to admit finally to the Ukrainians that he knew that the Russians would be attacking him since last October, but he did nothing because he wanted to keep the economy of Ukraine going during the crisis. And he said that he would have lost like seven billions a month if he started to. Uh, but that means that many people stayed in Ukraine because they thought they were safe. And instead they ended up being killed. So that is uh, already a scandal that is starting to, for the first time since the beginning of the war, alter the perception of the Ukrainians towards their supposed leader which is, of course, a tool, a puppet of George Soros. Uh, so here we are really uh, in front of a very dangerous situation, which will, of course, not only uh, damage uh, parts of, uh, of Europe, because uh, we, we saw what happened uh, in the 80s with, uh, with uh, Chernobyl, which was in northern Ukraine. Zaporizhia is actually further south, so it would be even probably more damaging for parts of Central North Europe. Um, at that time, let's remember that the, the radioactivity moves always towards, seems that it usually moves always uh, uh, towards the west rather than the east. And, 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 and at that time in Chernobyl, uh, we saw with Chernobyl uh, the radioactivity arriving in the reindeers of Scandinavia, uh, arriving in Italy where we were told to wash our salads two times a day or three times a day to not get it, uh, to, pop, to, to eat even any vegetable. We had to be very careful because the radioactivity started to spread all over uh, Europe, not only in the north of Europe, because Italy is definitely not in the north of Europe. But this means that uh, also there is a problem with the grains because now half of the world relies on these grains, on this flour that comes from Ukraine. And the moment in which it becomes radioactive, it's obvious that that grain, it's not uh, any longer, uh, you don't want to uh, make your bread with some uh, radioactive flour or, 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 or your pasta or whatnot, or eat your cereals with the radioactivity. No. So, I really uh, start to be worried because I don't think the Americans have a perception of what's going to happen in that case. That means that half of the grains of the world, that means that basically on top of already the problems that we have that are leading to mass starvation and famine in the world, we had an ulterior problem. And so that is the moment in which we will see mass migrations completely crashing society. I mean, at that point, Europe, of course, will become a war zone with the Africans arriving in uh, like an invasion that will not be able, we will not be able to stop. Now, there is a lot less people arriving from Northern Africa into Europe than from actually Mexico into in America at the moment, but it might no longer be that, uh, you know, once the situation starts to get out of control. So the, the whole thing about uh, the, the Russia-Ukrainian uh, confrontation, it's only the beginning of really fomenting the future nuclear lockdowns. Because uh, the topic that today we decided to touch is a very complex topic. Eh? But it's also an important topic because it's about the future plans of the New World Order 
uh, with humanity and uh, what are they planning really and what are they planning well they're planning to use these nuclear lockdowns just like they use the preceding lockdowns that really kind of uh, prepared prepared and made us uh, this endless covid hysteria was of course an experiment in social conditioning that functioned very well and now we are going to see the next stage of all this. And the next stage is to lock us in our houses, get us acquainted, because before, you know, they got us acquainted with Zoom, they got us acquainted with the learning at distance from your schools, all that. I mean, they made us acquainted with living inside their homes through the internet. But the next move is to make us acquainted into the metaverse, to the met force us into the metaverse. But what if almost. you don't want to be in the metaverse? You will not have any choice because the other. Uh, if you want to live a life made out of uh, a social life, you will otherwise be locked into your house or under your house because we're talking about nuclear lockdowns here. They're not talking about. It. So the the, the definitely a, Ge a Geiger counter will be definitely a good idea to have. Huh? But uh, what what we're seeing here, for example, regarding uh, the. Uh, there is also a lot of strategy of tension. You see, they, they are playing with tension. They are making people afraid. Uh, just to watch uh, the map that uh, came out on the sun, the map of the nuclear fallout uh, yesterday, and uh, of course, discussing a chilling map shows how Chernobyl style fallout was spread across Europe as Russia plans attack on nuclear. So, I mean, of course. Uh, and the propaganda is always aimed against Russia, the sun, it's a British uh, intelligence asset. But what we're trying to make you understand also is that uh, there is a very uh, creepy coincidence in the fact that just a few days ago, they used a intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence tool to uh, make images of the future of the matter. And uh, I have uh, just uh, published an article yesterday, which uh, you can find on leozagami.com regarding uh, this whole thing. The diabolical plan to basically trigger these nuclear uh, lockdowns and then acquaint us with the metaverse and then push us towards merging with the machines. Because you see, the metaverse can be uh, joined passively through the VR, through the virtual uh, reality glasses, through augmented reality and all that, but can also become the launch for their future plan, which is to merge, yeah. merge uh, man with machine. And these people will permanently have certain things on their bodies because they will be living there. So you say, why they not be interested. Okay, but I want to tell you what's happening here. Because the elite will keep on living in their islands. They will keep living in their rich resource, radioactive free. While instead, parts of the population uh, that are unfortunate in those areas where there's a major radioactivity, they will be forced into their homes. And then, at that point, to have some kind of social life, they will be given the metaverse option. And then, that is how the elite wants to push, by the end of the decade, 80% of humanity inside the metaverse, while that 20 to 10% of elite people can then have access to the resources, the farm, and the real world, where we, of course, are locked into the cage of virtual reality. They will make it more, uh, you know, uh, they are trying to promote it in every way possible and imaginable. My new book that will come out soon, uh, Volume 8, that will also show you what they are planning uh, for uh, Hollywood in the metaverse and many other things. So the, 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 actual, uh, the actual plan they have is a very diabolical plan. And, and, and it's, 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 uh, it might not happen now because of Zaporizia, but it might happen tomorrow because of a uh, nuclear device that is triggered by some terrorist group, a uh, dirty bomb, let's say. That is really, the, the, unfortunately, the, the future. Um, and, and this 
you know, this this whole thing is is being planned in a way. I said it here. The first stage is, of course, the pandemic. The second uh, stage is, of course, uh, uh, moving towards the nuclear, and that nuclear uh, then moves us towards transhumanism. The final stage of merging with the machine. Because remember that cyber Satan, the uh, ACA, the artificial intelligence, will uh, be introduced as the supreme controller within the next 10 years. By 2030, they should be able to take control uh, of the whole system. And uh, at the moment, of course, uh, many people uh, will, uh, will say that uh, Americans have really probably rolled over uh, I mean, um, acclimatized too easily towards the various restrictions that were imposed on them. And uh, those restrictions and the possibility of continuing with those restrictions is what the system wants, because the system wants to control us yes. more and more. Please. So I heard that there were some states and some like little patches of America during that time that didn't even lock down. They didn't close their stores during yeah. that, that Of time. course, and they are the, the, the parts of America that are more successful now economically are the parts like Texas, Florida, where there was no limitations on the economy, no limitations on, on the people's uh, tra moving around and traveling. Those parts of the countries are the parts of the countries that are actually doing better because in those Democrat Sorry if I say shittles like New York City, people are actually not going back to work. People are not going back to work. In Democrat-ruled territory, people are not going back to work. While instead, we see a striving economy in those areas where people were able to continue working and continue work. While instead, you know, the Democrats were giving money, getting people to stay at home. Uh, planting basically in their in their heads the idea that everything will be fine if they simply stay at home. Well, in that case, uh, let me put it here. Maybe it's better. Because eh? <laughs> you keep yeah. getting like this. Um, I know everybody's uh, noticed. Yeah, uh, the light. Uh, 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 I think it's a light it's thing. So annoying. Uh, it's a light thing. It's a light thing. Definitely, it's a light thing. Yeah, if you put maybe that closer, maybe we can. No. Yes, I think that might work out with the oh, lights. Yeah. Yes, more lights we have. Uh, oh, like that? Yes, yes. Uh, Let's see. Is that better? Yes, it's less. That's not my... I don't mm, like that. Okay, put it back. Uh, it creates more shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. We've been fiddling with the lights. Okay. So, as you can see, the, the, the situation is definitely not... Dude, now we have huh? five. Well, that's better than nothing. <laughs> so, um, we will be, of course... Uh, seeing more tension around this nuclear plant. And it's not definitely the Russians who are going to create the problem here. It seems like the ones intended in doing a false flag are more the Ukrainians, to tell you the truth. Zelensky, especially, that in this moment of difficulty politically, because he's under pressure, might really say, OK, let's go, let's, let's get back. It, the thing is this. Basically, the Ukrainians are saying, and the United Nations is supporting that. Guterres just visited the Secretary General uh, Zaporizhia. That the nuclear plant in question, the energy produced there, needs to stay for the Ukrainian people. The Russians, of course, have occupied the station and would like to then take this energy and send it to Crimea and other areas that are, of course, uh, or the Donbass, who are, of course, under Russian control. Now, the problem is that Zelensky doesn't want to accept that, and basically, apparently in secret, has threatened that if uh, the Russians will take away the electricity from the Ukrainians, they will simply bomb the place and the whole and the whole of the country will go to hell. So, I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, it's, it's like, of course, uh, a situation uh, that uh, is developing, but uh, the idea really is it's, 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 it's that. At the same time, we have uh, drone strikes on headquarters of the occupied Crimea region. Now, Crimea was already annexed to Russia in 2014. It went through a, um, a poll that decided their annexation to the Russian Federation. So they're using the weapons, and America has just donated another 750 
million dollars of weapons to uh, to Ukraine, they are using their weapons against Russia, even in Russian territory. That is not such a good idea because if they continue with these attacks, uh, they, they might uh, trigger the reaction of Russia. A reaction that, of course, uh, will not be a pleasant one and might uh, then at that point uh, escalate in some nuclear confrontation. We hope that's not the case. But we still go back to the point that uh, I was making. Um, they want to force us into our homes. They showed that they can do it already and they might do it again. Because that, that's really what they want, uh, Christy. What do you think? You're probably right. I feel like we're going to probably get that happening again. Just because it worked for them before with the other elections, so they're going to do what worked for them, what made, you know, they were successful with that, so. Well, inflation is quietly stripping us of our private property rights. Think about it, that's really part of the Great Reset. And that's really what I've been oh, saying nothing. in this book. And you will be happy, right? And inflation is doing that. If you have less purchasing power to buy discretionary items, then by proxy, you have less private property. Uh, and, and that is, is a fact. So the Great Reset and stocks, bonds, real estate, and the dollar are about, unfortunately, to get vaporized. That is what happens with the inflation gets into stocks, bonds, real estate, and the dollar. Yes, and 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 and, and that means uh, that uh, basically uh, soon uh, a lot of people might really have some serious problems because of that. People uh, like, for example, the elder part of the population who is retiring was invested in stocks and bonds, and yeah. you know, and then maybe they have homes and stuff. Um, and then we have, of course, the hysteria connected to, 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 to the China virus so with uh, the China virus is here to stay mentality, which is basically the admission also of the CDC that COVID is here to stay. And that's it. After, after two years of, 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 of limitation, restrictions, everything to just uh, now it's kind of like, OK, we can't stop it, whatever. But as long, of course, as you continue to inject whatever. That is really the, 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 the mentality here, unfortunately. And uh, stocks are uh, only uh, pathway through a massive bear market. And, 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 and that. Partway through a massive bear market. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Mm. So, so it's, it's time to take a stand. And it's time to see if we can survive all this. And uh, I suggest, of course, to purchase this book uh, and uh, prepare for the great reject of all this. Um, because we are not uh, really uh, you know, happy with what's going to happen. But we would like people to wake up and to be able to at least save their lives and their the lives of their loved, one, loved ones in this, uh, in the proximity of this uh, uh, disaster, let's say. No? I mean, in the end, though, and I've been in a situation like you where you had to choose mm. between material possessions, survival comes first, mm. and then food and water and shelter and, you know, taking care of your loved ones comes first. And so it doesn't, to me anyway, it doesn't even matter as long as I have enough to survive. And I think you come down to that when you're forced to be faced, which a lot of people have never been faced with that kind of decision. It, to me, it wasn't really a decision, you know. Just let's do it. <laughs> I mean, who cares? Who yeah, cares? Yeah. Who cares? Just. You can't have an attachment to material items, no matter. I mean, I know that you love your books and um, all your records and stuff, but and I didn't know how we were going to be able to leave Italy, you know, because everything you love, you have to leave it behind. But in the end, you do it. You do it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. You just do it. None of those things matter. 
Well, absolutely well said, Christy. And uh, of course, uh, the, the Western governments are doing everything possible to destroy the economy. They're built back better bullshit. They're, uh, uh, this is the core consequence of everything that is promoted within the World Economic Forum. That is really, like explaining my book, uh, uh, the fruit of a past legacy from the order of the Illuminati. And that then went on to produce the League of the Just, the Communist Manifesto of Karl Marx, the revolution in Russia, the revolution in China. This uh, situation is, of course, all part of a plan that eventually will produce a society of numbers, not of human beings, because human beings are not going to be regarded as, as, as important in 10 years from now when the machines will be in charge of everything. The machines don't really care about human beings. We saw it over and over again that artificial intelligence is pretty much hateful towards human beings. Um, Hiding behind the false justification that current inflation is driven by too much demand, because you know that is the, the, what they're saying. Central banks in Europe, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada, and the U.S. Federal Reserve are raising interest rates all the time. The outcome we are currently feeling is an intentional economic contraction and what is a global recession. But from a recession, we might end up then in depression, which is even worse. And Trump, in one of his latest speeches publicly, he said also, you know, depression. I mean, because then from recession, you get into depression. Uh, and the Build Back Better monetary policy is uh, basically shrinking Western economic activity and impacting everything. And uh, it's impacting even those countries they say they would like to to help the, the, the countries in the third world and so on. So the, 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 we, we, we might really be left with very little at the end of all this. And in the meantime, of course, they are brainwashing uh, everybody. They are recruiting, like the United Nations just did, 100,000 uh, digital uh, first responders uh, or uh, info warriors <laughs> of, 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 the, of the UN cause that uh, in, in some way or another uh, will be uh, present online to push the establishment the narrative on uh, the China virus and everything else. So now we have, of course, uh, people uh, like the World Economic Forum that are advocating for the merging of human and AI to then censor hate speech and misinformation. I repeat, these are things that I have discussed all uh, very much in uh, volume seven of my confessions, but uh, they are, of course, at the moment, uh, a very important uh, uh, topic of uh, discussion as we see it unfolding, as we see it unfolding, just as we saw unfolding Nancy Pelosi's uh, provocation in Taiwan and then other Democrats that, uh, and other politicians from America that went to Taiwan simply to uh, trigger a possible confrontation with the China, a confrontation that uh, we know it's uh, almost impossible. But let me show you what has happened with, uh, with the Chinese uh, politician that apparently, a diplomat actually from China, that uh, uh, yesterday or the day before, Posted on uh, posted on uh, their uh, social network of choice. In this case, it was Twitter. A mem, a mem that uh, in a way confirms that the Chinese know that 9/11 was an inside job, and, and they don't make a secret about it. So I made an I made an article that you can check on liozagami.com. Here, here it is, and. Uh, uh, this article is about Lin Zhao, deputy director of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, who mocks the U.S. on Twitter, implying 9-11 was an inside job. This, this uh, mockery is rather clear, Kisti, because just go, I mean, it's about you know, what, uh, what America has done, America, what America, what Japan thinks I do, and they show the nuclear bomb, or to Vietnam, and they show uh, what Korea, and all this. But in the end, what I actually do is 9-11. So they're saying that we don't 
No, it is saying we're that, not doing it to other people. We're doing it to ourselves. We're not doing it to ourselves. I mean, it's like uh, uh, the narrative that uh, America gives is a false narrative, and the Chinese are uh, saying, "Listen, you, you, you are actually. We know that you. you it's almost like uh, they are sending a message, a call, a message to America. Listen, we know that." Uh, it is. Uh, it, it was an inside job. So, just no. Huh? Okay. Um, I have some more trivial news to go through. <laughs> yeah. Trivial news. <laughs> yeah. Well, something that can be a little bit less, uh, you know, less dramatic. But in reality, it is dramatic because uh, it is regarding a Florida man who survived an alligator attack, caught on drone video. The guy survived, though. Good for him. Something to think about as we begin this next story. A 12 foot long alligator weighs about 500 pounds. It can bite down with a crushing 2,000 pounds per square inch. A Florida man went swimming where he shouldn't and nearly paid with his life. The attack and its aftermath captured on video. It's hard to watch, but there's a happy ending. Even before he went swimming in a Florida lake, no one could ever question Juan Carlos Laverde's toughness. The former U.S. Air Force pararescuer, triathlete, and firefighter paramedic owns an outdoor adventure company. He was filming a promotional video for a race his company was hosting, this drone footage capturing a 12-foot alligator heading straight for him. That thing was huge. It wasn't a little gator. It would be funny if it was a little gator. Nothing funny about the attack. With the right stroke, all I felt was scales, teeth, and then right there, I'm like, oh, okay. So I, what I think I did, what I felt like I did, was that I immediately tried to open its jaws because I knew I was in a gator. Speaking through jaws now wired shut, JC says he put his hand in the gator's mouth and fought for his life. When I felt the teeth, I immediately knew. And then as I opened it, I know that either, either I turned it or it turned me, but it was confused just as I was confused. And then it just let go. He swam to the dock, hoisted himself up, and was driven to the hospital by a good Samaritan, calling 911 himself along the way. JC underwent an emergency six hour surgery to repair severe facial and skull injuries. Doctors removing a portion of his skull that the alligator's teeth had pierced. He wears a helmet to protect the right side of his head. He's been hospitalized twice, and more surgery lies ahead. His message to those who see this story find your God. Find your God. Find him. Oh my God. Silly. You know, I get that that's scary. I do. With life, um, scary voice. So you could either carry that load by yourself or allow someone to carry it for you. His adventure company is called Defeat X. In this case, X was an alligator. Wow. Well, I mean, his message, uh, find God, I mean, uh, definitely a positive message. Chrissy, is that your crying moment of the day? Is that my crying moment yeah, of the day? Yeah, yeah. Let, let's see if it is the crying moment of the <laughs> day. <was> starting. <laughs> Start. <laughs> Jeez, man, I can only get a crash your skull. He, he shouldn't have gone, of course, uh, uh, to swim in, 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 in that the place, uh, but... I mean, uh, Florida, it's full of alligators. So, I mean, you really need to keep You can even go to Disney World without getting yeah, attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's really, you need to, 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 to keep your eyes open. So, guys, uh, stay safe if you are, of course, uh, in Florida. And and for the for the sharks, too. In, mm. in Myrtle Beach. Mm. In Myrtle Beach. I, I used to go there because I used to live very Yeah, very yeah, close. yeah. That is uh, really, they had two attacks in one day. Yeah. Yeah, the, the it's really not like a place that has shark attacks, so mm -hmm. it's very rare. Staying here in America, something uh, uh, good happened in a very unusual situation. Uh, well, we should judge it together, we should watch it together. It's about basically a girl was about to be raped by somebody who went into a house the mother saved uh, saved her the mother herself didn't look like uh, i mean of course she was scared of the guy so i don't know i mean she looks like a tough cookie the mother maybe herself also a terrific of a society i don't know i mean she looked pretty wild <laughs> let me show you guys this scene because 
it's it's incredible what happened and of course you are watching it here on the leo zagami show uh, the leo zagami show where we of course try to uh, bring you uh, the latest news but also in our saturday uh, appointment we try to uh, do a rundown now of uh, uh, of the weekly news weekly rundown <laughs> a weekly rundown <laughs> yes, is that what saying? So um, let me see if I can find all this news. Uh, as, uh, I have so much stuff here that uh, it is uh, at times uh, um, I get uh, I get to. You have a lot of stuff right there. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I have a lot of stuff, and I have uh, this news that I would like to to find regarding this uh, woman that managed to fight the guy but it seems like it's almost impossible to find maybe i can try here um, let me see let me see in the meantime christy you can of course uh, talk about it here we are we <laughs> good because i don't know what to say <laughs> okay <laughs> you should always have you should always be ready huh Okay, guys, this is what happened in Arizona and Prescott, in Prescott. I mean, we passed there, we know the area. Um, this is what happened the other day. Now to a disturbing story out of Yavapai County, where a registered sex offender is accused of breaking into a family's home and getting into bed with a 12-year-old girl. The sheriff's office says the girl's mother acted quickly, detaining the suspect until deputies arrived. Team 12's Adriana Loya spoke exclusively with the family about that terrifying situation. I mean, uh, this is, she's, she was tough, man. Well, yeah, well, While the Paulden community just north of Prescott slept, the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office says a registered sex offender broke into a family's home near State Route 89. I had literally just gotten to sleep. Mayla Hogan waking up to the voice of her 12-year-old daughter around 3 in the morning. Now, the, the, the mother seems to like a tough cookie, though. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I come in and she goes, oh, no, guys. She doesn't seem like... I went in the wrong house. Mm. Did she be in my... She was laying on top of me and whispering and uh, telling me what was going on. Happening just feet away from them, the man authorities identified as 54-year-old Lloyd Beard was inside their home half naked. The 12-year-old says the suspect laid down next to her and started touching her face. That's when the girl got up and woke up her mother. Mayla confused at first because she says the suspect was apparently singing, but quickly realized there was an intruder in her home. And I was telling him to get out and I opened up the door because he, he just wasn't responding. And of course, I physically removed him from the house. But when I physically removed him from the house, I was able to tell that his pants were down. The family calling police while they say the suspect stuck around and hid behind their car. I heard grunting on the other side of my car. And when I went, walked around the car, he was there exposed. Beard took off running. He was kind of doing like a weird, like drunk jog, I guess. But the suspect not making it very far. He was tackled by the 16 year old son just a few feet away and later restrained by the mother. If I'm being honest, my mom, she got a, a couple a lot a lot of hits in the mother and son restraining beard until deputies arrived he was taken to a hospital with minor injuries and booked on numerous charges beard is a level three sex offender who registered with the yavapai county sheriff's office last week that department today applauding her actions you know we're we're all impressed with the mom being quite level-headed she went into as i said mama bear uh, uh mode and made sure that she was going to protect her children by the grace of god I'm a roughneck, and by the grace of God, I've got good children, and um, and by that same grace of God, we will prevail. Adriana Loya, 12 News. Amen. <laughs> oh, God, yes. We really report on the weekly news, and sometimes it's just, like, incredible, no? I mean, definitely she's a roughneck, but she's a tough one. <laughs> they were good for her. Good for her. She managed to, of course, protect her daughter. And, 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 and I mean, there is definitely... Uh, some uh, weird news uh, this week. Uh, one uh, of, uh, of the most weird uh, things uh, that I uh, uh, came across this week was uh, this Pennsylvania man that was arrested 
for uh, basically buying stolen human remains. Now, uh, I, I want to show you the news uh, because then I want to show you the face of this guy who was stealing the human remains so then you, you understand what kind of guy he was. So this is Pennsylvania, man arrested for buying stolen human remains. So how do you think this guy looks? That's for buying. Okay, uh, now I, I'm going to show the face now of the guy. How do you think he looks? I think he looks like a typical riptide. Let's watch. I was right. <laughs> this guy's typical I mean, This guy's a monster. Oh, he's a Satan. He's, he's definitely a demon incarnated. I mean, it's pretty clear. But a lot of, of, of people are looking like this. <laughs> huh? Society is changing. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. And it's really yeah. scary. It's, uh, and it's just happening right in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. So, um, I noticed the subtle changes. Yeah. And um, just then we have everything, everything. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah definitely. So there is subtle changes, and then there is other kind of changes. This kind of change was a radical one when a mom chopped the penis off of the boyfriend because he was also trying to sleep with his daughter. So you see, this kind of tendency, uh, perversion and stuff. Uh, Really more and more present in our society. You know? Mom chops off boyfriend penis after he tried to rape her daughter. Good for her. And uh, we, you know, and so this is like the second thing we report about people trying to abuse children. You know? yeah. And 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 uh, this is uh, what happened apparently. I mean, the guy got his dick chopped off. Hey man. <laughs> I don't the, know. I mean. That's just terrible. Yeah, that is terrible, but that's what he's... That, he, no, not to him. I mean, he deserved it. You get what you get. I mean, get what you uh, get. If you're I mean, like that, you're going to get it. I mean, that is really crazy stuff. Now, we all know that this week there was a lot of talk about the clown of uh, Stelter who lost his job from <laughs> CNN. Now, if you never saw that clown of Stelter... <laughs> I'm going to have to show you his clowny face because he's no longer going to be with us on CNN. But having said that, the Babylon Bee apparently has offered him a job to read fake news. Uh, he can join like this Cuomo. They can both work there. Yeah, we are, they can. So Babylon Bee offers job to suck clown Stelter. I mean, this is really quite incredible. I don't know if 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 the Babylon Bee has done it just as a provocation of they really want to give him a job, but he should take that job. I mean, he will definitely, a guy like this will be the ideal guy to read the Babylon Bee piss-off news. You, you know, they are a satirical side. Stelter, you have a job. Go and get it. I mean, that's it. I mean, with a face like that, you can only be on the Babylon Bee. Regarding instead the, the satanic verses of, uh, of, of the guy who was, uh, of course, also the, the subject of an attack uh, last week, we saw that someone last year was attacked. Oh, yeah. Well, it didn't really work out well for, for, for those people who, 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 in a way, you know, hope that someone rush is simply going to disappear. Nobody was reading the, the, the satanic verses any longer. Now everybody wants to read the satanic <laughs> verses of Salman Rushdie. I don't think the result was so good. In fact, uh, it, it's kind of like uh, on top of the Amazon book sales chart. No, some people didn't know who he was. <laughs> A lot of people didn't know who he was. But suddenly, he's on top of the bestseller list because he was stopped. Now, I don't want to be stopped to go on top of the bestseller list, guys. So please purchase my book without being stopped. Uh, it's 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 uh, and, and and this book, but also the books of uh, my lovely wife, uh, which is uh, this volume, volume one of uh, Illuminati Princess Confessions, and volume two. These two books. I just had a friend that I've known my whole life. We, mm. She just read my books, mm. and she really enjoyed them. And it made me feel really good because she knows me, you mm. know, and she remembered some of the things that I wrote about in my book. And mm. so, like, in the past, because I knew her in my 20s. So she really enjoyed it. That's good. I have to get her to leave a review. <laughs> That's good. That's very it made good. Me feel good. Eh? You know, she's my oldest friend, so... 
made me feel good that she liked it. She's like my sister. So. <laughs> However, I mean, when it comes down to uh, to CNN, it seems like they are aiming for a more centrist audience. I think they want to go back to what they used to be when we grow up. Uh, you Which know, one? it was more less bias, less politically uh, motivated uh, news service that only goes on the air to attack one person, which is Donald J. Trump. You know, that, that is a thing. So I think that that's their aim now. CNN is the ratings have gone that. no, but the ratings have gone down the drain, and now it seems they want to go back up the ladder. It's going to be difficult. And I don't think it's going to be an easy task. Maybe they can hire you to well, change uh, the look of the station. Well, if they hire me, they change everything. Uh, and, and, and of course, if you go in, uh, on one of these slip touch charts, uh, sorry, sites, look what you get. Get vaccinated, wear a mask, all this kind of bullshit, which, of course, uh, we would like to eliminate in order to see the news, but the news is not possible. You, you can't see the news in these sites because they just covered it up with the rubbish. Uh, the, the, my intention was to show you instead this. Warner, executive John Malone, waits in on Stelter House there, says he wants the new portion of CNN to be more centrist. So you see the clown goes away, and uh, now they want uh, a more centrist approach. We have to get rid of that other guy too, John. His name, Lemon. Ah, Don Lemon. Don Lemon. Well, Don <laughs> Lemon, <laughs> definitely. Uh, uh, uh. Don Lemon also needs to go, I guess. Um, it's not going to be easy, though, guys. It's not going to be easy for CNN to go back to what they used to be because I think that they have completely ruined themselves. And in the meantime, you know, the market has changed. There's a lot more. I mean, when they built up their brand, there was nobody 24 hours ago. They were the first cable news service 24 hours a day of only news. Now everybody in the world is doing it. So it's like it's very difficult to rebuild a brand that you basically they they basically destroy themselves. I mean, they only have themselves to blame. They only have themselves to blame. Uh, now, guys, uh, I would like instead to go to the Vatican uh, and also in Italy because a few things have happened regarding the Vatican. Uh, I don't know if I can find the image. Uh, there was actually a couple of a few days ago an interesting event that happened when, when uh, basically a uh, one of those uh, Swiss guards collapsed in front of the Pope. Uh, one just phew, went down. But the, the the news of the day regarding the Pope is that uh, apparently on the 29th and, 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 and 30th of August, so in 10 days from now. In the secret rooms of the Consistoro, where he will meet with all the cardinals, at that point he might actually announce his resignation. Because uh, what's happening here is a little bit weird. I mean, I want to just give an idea for those who don't know uh, what's, what's happening. I mean, like I said uh, already in June, the Vatican is preparing for the Pope to leave because he's very sick and because he wants to resign. The, the, he will leave, though, after nominating more cardinals that at that point is just like hacking the Supreme Council. Then at that point, you can basically direct the will of the, uh, of the conclave, of the next conclave, to elect then the Pope. So the, the Pope uh, is, is apparently something is happening in the Vatican. Uh, a lot of journalists are talking about it. They say, qualcosa accadrà. So... Keep this in mind, guys. There is uh, a possibility that in 10 days from now, the Pope might resign. And if he does resign, of course, you have that first uh, here on the Leo Zagami show. In the meantime, uh, there is a document that will be presented by the Pope that will uh, ulteriorly uh, transform the church that is being kind of filtered through Douglas Pia here, and they talk about the plans that uh, this uh, new church needs to, uh, to, to take. Uh, this, uh, this is the document that was filtered uh, through Douglas Pia. Now, it says here, 
though, that the consistorial risk on the volare schiaffoni, which means it risk to become really a, a, a fighting match between cardinals who are sincerely pissed off with what's going on in the yeah. church and with, uh, with Pope Francis. So this is definitely uh, an interesting uh, thing that uh, you should all be looking at. Keep it in mind, the consistoro, which is a reunion of the cardinals that the Pope has issued for the first time, though, without any replicas. Usually, you know, a consistoro is made when the cardinals can meet with the Pope and interact with him. You know, we have this problem. Okay, how are we going to sort it out? Now, the incredible thing about this consistoro is that the Pope is going to simply deliver a message and then he's going to leave and no rep replicas uh, are um say previsto they are uh, they, uh, they, they, they don't uh, foresee any replicas from the pope that is a little bit like when uh, Joseph Fratzinger gave his message in Latin that sincerely almost nobody in the room understood apart from those few priests who understand Latin minority and that message was basically that he was resigning <laughs> and it took, it took a day or two to, to, to understand what he was saying in that message but this could happen on, uh, in 10 days from now we could be assisting to another historic resignation of the pope and that would be an historic resignation unique because we still have a living resigning pope on top we're gonna have another resigning pope three popes and then we're going to have, uh, sorry, three popes. And this and who's the third pope? Well, the one that they will elect. Probably Cardinal Turkson from Africa, because that's really what's going to happen here. Autumn is going to see the crash of the European markets, the possibility of the start of a catastrophe that will see half of Africa moving to Europe, and then they will need, of course, a pope to make it more acceptable, a little bit to like when the fall of the Soviet Union brought a bunch of Polish people to Italy in the 80s, and everybody was saying, who the heck are these people? Oh, well, but the Pope is Polish. Oh. So, so the, 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 there is definitely a lot of work that has been done behind the scenes. We are now opening, of course, our phone lines. Who's going to call in? I don't know. <laughs> Probably nobody. <laughs> I mean, but I, maybe there's people listening that um, aren't in the chat, so, you know. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes it can be possible. Uh, we, we, of course, will stress people to please subscribe to our new channels. We will be also inaugurating a new channel. No? Yeah. Next week. So, yeah. It'll be always the Gami Show channel. Okay, which will be a great thing. So this is the phone number. Let me put it on the screen. Uh, plus one, nine, seven, zero, five, seven, seven, six, three, six, nine. I will open, of course, uh, the, um, the phone line. And uh, if uh, you want to call in, as you know, this last part of the show has always had the phone lines open. Mm -hmm. No? Yep. So uh, we would love to hear from you. And uh, the phone lines are now officially open. So you can call in. I know it's called. <laughs> because <laughs> who knows if they're going to call okay so we heard that what's going to happen in the Vatican we heard that, uh, that, that of course uh, this ongoing crisis uh, with the, the nuclear plant but have you heard that basically there is going to uh, in Venezuela Venezuela yes uh, Russia is going to actually have their war games because that's what's going to happen for the first time Basically, the back door of, on, in the, uh, I mean, the United States, uh, Venezuela is not that far away. I mean, it's not, it's like uh, the Americans doing uh, some kind of exercises in Georgia, close to Russia. Uh, it is definitely an unprecedented move. Venezuela is very close to Russia. We knew that uh, uh, all along. We know that Venezuela, of course, with Maduro, it's, 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 it's in a very desperate situation. And uh, because of that, uh, they will uh, uh, guest the Russia uh, war games. Snipers from Russia and other countries hostile to the United States are competing in war games being held this week in Venezuela. 
and it, uh, events described as Olympic Games for soldiers that were organized not only to show that Moscow still has friends, but also that some of them are in Latin America. And so this is, of course, after America has uh, unsuccessfully tried to uh, take away Maduro, get their own, uh, if you remember, now they had the Mason that was initiated, that was then brought, uh, I don't even remember his name anymore, but nothing changed. Maduro is still there. And uh, the situation basically, it's now that for the first time in history, we have war games by Russia here in a country in the back door of America. Crazy. There are a lot of people from Venezuela that are coming in. When you see those, those people coming in through the border, a lot of them are also from Venezuela. And so are these people also potential terrorists that can uh, go against American interests? Of course, there is a possibility that, uh, and, and there has been various arrests already at the border. Even Middle Eastern people and uh, of other countries can easily come in. And of course, uh, they can do it thanks to Joe Biden. Yeah. And, 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 and like we said at the beginning of the show, uh, it's, it's, I don't understand how, you see, for example, the Daily Mail, you know, the Daily Mail is British, but they are usually very anti-Trump, anti-Republican, the typical British leftists. But having said that, how is it possible? And then they don't realize that the death of downtown San Francisco, Cleveland, and Portland have seen drop by almost 50%, a soaring crime in the Democrat trans cities forces workers. It says here, Democrat runs cities. So why the heck do you continue supporting these idiots? Are the British people liptards or are yeah, they, they are? Yes, no, but are they liptards or are they retards? <laughs> it's like because if you if you don't understand this, you must be completely demented. Um, no. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious that, uh, that the situation in the, in the democratic cities uh, and all the cities, unfortunately, are in the hands of the Democrats because in the big cities, very few people are really politically motivated. That's what happens. And, and that's why I replied to you, uh, telling you, listen, I know in New York nobody cares about politics, but is this a good thing? No, it's not a good thing. It's absolutely not a good thing. Now, another thing that is a little bit disturbing, uh, it's regarding instead uh, the fact that uh, they are starting to confiscate weapons here in the United States of America. In this case, we're talking about uh, uh, rare breed FRT-15 triggers that, of course, uh, uh, were sold legally and very tranquil. I mean, they even have a video about this kind of uh, uh, triggers on Vimeo. You, you, you can check it out. I mean, now apparently they got, uh, you know, they, they got basically the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Farms and Explosives at the, their doors to confiscate previously legal forced reset triggers for AI, uh, uh, AR-15 style ri uh, rifles. So this is what's happening. I mean, they're starting to confiscate things. And uh, the, the possibility that they come uh, to your door and confiscate the, your weapon, it's always a possibility. Let me show you uh, what you're talking about. Of course, this is a, a trade of uh, publicity spot by the kind of thing that they, they confiscated that basically transformed your, your, your gun more in a, in, a, in a rifle kind of thing. Okay. It has a specific cycle of operation. All semi-automatic firearms have eight steps that occur during the cycle of operation. Those steps are firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking, feeding. So it's, it's, it's of course, they're starting their war against semi-automatic rifles, but where are they going to end up? You know, if it was for the Democrats, we're going to not even be able to, to, to own a, a pistol or anything uh, of sorts. They are coming after your rifles, your weapons, your everything, because they want us with no weapons in the future so they can abuse us. They can, of course, uh, do everything that our ancestors and the people who created this great country of America 
already vision back then, and that's why we have the First and the Second Amendment. There is no freedom of speech without guns in your hands. And let me tell you, I've witnessed that by living in countries in Europe where, of course, just like in China in 1949, they went after the war door by door and took every single gun possible away from the, from the citizens who are now in the hands of a bunch of criminals. Because when you don't have the guns, then the guns are still circulating, but they're circulating in the hands of the criminals, of the crooks. So, you know, what is better? Is it better to, 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 to have a legal gun? It's a little bit like uh, the question regarding the drugs, no? I mean, I know that not all uh, conservatives think like that, but many do. We have, of course, a friend, Pratik Moore, uh, who worked with Roger Stone on, on, a, on the Stone Project, regarding marijuana. The legalization of drugs definitely takes money from the criminals. Now, the next move, though, uh, of the legalization uh, might be a very controversial one, as Colombia, the number one country producer of cocaine, wants to legalize it. Now that is, though, a very good move because finally, if you move, if if you start legalizing uh, uh, these kind of drugs, you are taking the supply of money that constantly goes and feeds the black ops and all the legal activities, also run by the intelligence agencies and the, the Illuminati and the Freemasons and all that. I so have a yes. So do you think if they make it legal, that more people would do it? No. Yeah. No. But no, no, it's not more people. I mean, I think just probably the same people it, would do it, and the same people wouldn't. Do listen, it. listen. Uh, I mean, alcohol was prohibited. Yeah, it didn't make true. really a difference. I mean, it, it makes a, so a difference when it comes down to the fact that you are taking away that money. I mean, during the prohibition, the mafia made their money. That's how they made their money. Uh, so, Colombia's largest cocaine supplier to U.S. considered decriminalizing. And this will be an historic move because this is a country that is constantly in war with the drug cartels, with the, 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 the army uh, that is constantly involved in this uh, battle. With the decriminalization, you are basically capable of focusing on the real things, making the country richer. And, 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 and I mean, I think that at the end of the day, it's not such a bad idea. I might not like cocaine myself, but for those who like it, buy it in the shop. Who cares? It's something that needs to be taken away from the legal market because if you leave it in the legal market, it obviously helps. Man, the TikToks will be crazy if they start doing cocaine. No, they're, they're, the problem is they already do cocaine. But the, 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 the problem here is no. There is a big problem here that we need to discuss. Okay. Cocaine today here in America is being cut with fentanyl. And uh, we know people that unfortunately by mistake ended up using it and nearly lost their lives. And we had a neighbor who died last year because of fentanyl. But so, he didn't do cocaine. But no, he, didn't, he did it because it gave him a, either they give you sleeping pills with fentanyl, like in the case of that guy, or either they put it in cocaine. Because then the, the problem is fentanyl here. Fentanyl is being uh, used by China to undermine the US, and China is paying the cartels in Mexico to do that dirty job. Those assholes from the cartels in Mexico, both the Sinaloa cartel, the Jalisco, whatever it's called, all that bullshit they're doing in Tijuana, these people are financed by China. That's what nobody's saying because everybody's scared of the cartels. So the, the problem here is fentanyl is produced in China, given to the cartels, and then the cartels bring it into America. Can you pick up these uh, numbers so it makes uh, less uh, trouble for us? So it's it's a uh, what are you doing? It's it's a big problem, definitely. So everyone watching this now, please repost the recorded episode later. Thank you, Bruce. Yes, people should definitely uh, help us by reposting uh, this uh, video. Trump, what have you been doing? Huh? Just mm -hmm. pull my dress. Come on. Come on. Come on.
This is the first uh, dog protagonist. Uh, that is very protagonist. Sit down. Come on. Come on. He's not going to stay. Listen to you. Listen to you. He's wild. Are you wild? Why are you wild? Well, because nobody called in. Nobody called in. Say you had wild. <laughs> Rambo. What happened, yeah. you guys? Put your, oh, wow. I guess most of our viewers that view us, that okay. we're viewing us, <laughs> don't subscribe to emergency channels. As usual. No, we know. Yeah, well, we know that they don't listen to us, but that's okay. You don't listen. I thought you listened, but you didn't listen. You don't listen. People uh, people uh, really could do, you know, just, I am out. they could just uh, push the button. So when, uh, if, uh, if, because now it's a problem of He's if. just that, so I can't do anything. Can you just put him on the thing and do what you usually do to make it see the different thing? Yeah, he's playing with the, with his monkey. No, not I monkey can't. words. What am I gonna do? Pick up, pick up Rambo and his monkey. I don't know. Do something. Pick up. Here. Pick yes. up. Pick up. He ran away. <laughs> okay, he's sitting down. I'm just gonna leave him. Eh? I'm gonna leave him sitting there. He's sitting there now. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's move on. We still have some news. In Italy, by the way, there has been some crazy weather and pieces of the, the you know, we've been in Venice, you know, and Venice is a beautiful place, but it's also a place that uh, uh, we witnessed during the Aqua Alta. You remember, we went, around, <laughs> yeah, we went around and there was water everywhere. But this time, boots. pieces of the San Marco de Campanile, of, of the actual uh, church, were coming off. Uh, let me show you what happened in Venice. Alla chiariva, via, via! Here we are, uh, of course, uh, we are in one of the most famous squares in Italy. Uh, you were saying a bell is a bell, but a campanile of a church is not a bell. Uh, let's, let, let me translate it for you. Um, and it's a bell tower, that's what it is. The bell pieces of the bell tower. Oh, so the actual structure that was holding yes. the bell. Yes, the okay, company uh, came pieces of, uh, and so they had to send the drones uh, to, to to check out if uh, if uh, the, the the company the the bell tower was still okay. Uh, this because we had some crazy weather in Italy in the last few days. Also in in Rome, eh? there was some crazy weather yesterday. Uh, there were people who died and, and and whatnot. So let me show you. Uh, what uh, happened when they send up the drone? Uh, I mean, Trista, this is a very nice view uh, to see if uh, this uh, bell tower was actually damaged. But fortunately, even if something falls from it, we don't exactly understand what. So, this is in Venice? Yes, this is Venice. I don't remember it. It was in the square we made the photo this day. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you remember that square? Now I do. Ah, okay. Did you say Marco Square? Yes. And, that's and this tower. is the company here, somebody, yes. Okay. Okay. So they sent up the drones, and there doesn't seem to be any any damage, fortunately. Huh? That's good. That's good, no? Okay. Uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, yet more news, yet more news, because uh, uh, there is a scandal in Finland. In Finland, with uh, their... Uh, Young and beautiful prime minister who was caught off guard in a private party being a little bit too wild. And so then she. Prime minister has gone wild? Oh, very wild. <laughs> Check this out. Uh, and, and they actually had, to, she had to do a drug test. She did a drug test. <laughs> These videos are private and filmed in a private space. I resent that these became known to the public. I spent a night with my friends. We just parted, also in a boisterous way. 
Did you use intoxicants in these situations? Alcohol. No drugs? Not that I know of. In one of the videos, they mention a flower gang. What is that? I don't know anything about that. Are there maybe other videos which have been used to blackmail you? Hey, meanwhile, no, I know Helsinki very well. I even brought you to Helsinki, but only at the airport once, yeah? On our way to Italian. I used to work in Helsinki in the club, and apparently she's a friend of Liv Tony, who used to be a, an owner of clubs, and uh, I think he still is a known DJ, one of the most known DJs in in uh, in Finland. Uh, so she might have been one of my parties. I used to actually DJ in Finland uh, up till 2002, I think. Um, oh, it's so cool. I am not being blackmailed. These are private videos and they were not supposed to be public. When were the videos filmed? Who filmed them? They were filmed this summer and in a private home. I'm not saying whose home it is. But this sound, <laughs> This candle this morning is another And that, of course, made the news. So, I mean, after the I mean, I mean, you know that, of course, you can answer. For some people, head dance here was a little bit to say. So let's start this together. Here we go. It's enough. So stop, 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 because uh, the sound went bad, which is something that happens here on stream yet sometimes. Just a second. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are, of course, uh, uh, with our show uh, in an unusual setup, which is the, the, the unusual, unusual. Not the setup is the same. It's the unusual the the platforms we're broadcasting with because we are using channels that we don't really broadcast usually from. So we picked up on those really faithful individuals who love our show. Yeah, you guys really love our show. And we are happy for that, and we thank you so much, uh, because, uh, I mean... Uh, I speak a thousand blessings on you. <laughs> and we hope that next week we will be back with a new channel that uh, will definitely become known to you. Uh, you need to uh, go on YouTube in one day or two and put the Leo Zagami Show. You will find a brand new channel full of content, we will upload there all the videos that uh, me and Christy ever did together, uh, all our broadcasts, and much more. Because this is the new home of the Leo Zagami show on YouTube, and we're going to make it a special place. And we're going to promote it in every social network possible and imaginable. And hopefully, we're not going to have the other one removed. But it's highly possible we are at the second strike that our main channel will be removed. And a lot of people will probably never find us again because they don't bother to simply subscribe to the emergency channels. You can say it a million times, and people just don't get it. I don't know. Maybe I should wear a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you can say so. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. We, we, we try, guys. Subscribe. We try. Subscri I'll just wear a subscribe T-shirt. Subscribe, subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to the new channel. And uh, did we see the oh, yeah, did we see the dancing? I guess we didn't, or we did our dancing. No, the dancing of what the intimate, it was not the dancing. Uh, yeah. I well, I would never. Well, I mean, whatever you're so jealous, you're a jealous man, <laughs> but the Finnish people are not so jealous, so that is not really. I mean, it's a normal thing in Finland, they are all a little bit like that, the men are a little bit uh, half mad. 
sorry. Well, you're not. Well, yeah. So, but in Scandinavia, <laughs> I mean, you've been, you've been in, a, you've been with me in Tallinn and stuff. I mean, the men are a little bit more a, a condescending. So even the husband may, may, maybe doesn't well, mind. I like that uh, here too. Maybe no, there's some. Listen, guys, maybe the husband likes to watch. Who maybe knows? He, he goes in the closet and watches. <laughs> it's definitely weird. So we don't know what happened here with the Sanna Marin, the Prime Minister of uh, of uh, Libtad Finland, uh, which is, by the way, a country that is completely Libtad. I mean, uh, it gave us Nokia, by the way. That is one of the things that they gave us. That is. Okay, now, before closing the show, I want to go down to where I come from, where my family comes from, where still I have family. In the island of Lipari, in the Olin oh, Islands, uh, where unfortunately, like in other places like Pantelleria, in the last few hours, there's been a really bad fire that uh, is going close to the house. It's including, including the house of my of is my cousin. Okay? Well, I hope uh, everybody's okay. But this is the island of Lipari, uh, in the Olin Islands near Sicily. You have to call your mother. Well, definitely. The, the island of Lipari is the biggest island uh, in uh, the Orient Islands, and it's an island where, in the land of uh, my family, they found uh, an ancient uh, Jewish cemetery, uh, which, uh, of course, uh, is also being reported in the Encyclopedia of Jewish Things in, in Sicily, uh, because uh, uh, it, it is a rarity, and with the, you know, with the menorah depicted and all the things, and that is in the land of my family. So that is um, in Lipari, and of course uh, uh, my uh, cousin Bartolino, you met Bartolino, who is the owner of the electric plant that gives electricity to both Lipari and Vulcano. So he's like a big uh, businessman over there. Uh, it's a private electric, electric company. So I guess he will have to also in some way probably be careful that he doesn't get his power line damage. I don't know. I mean, definitely we have to give a call and see what's happening down in Liberty. But this is, of course, news. Uh, and, and after there was a, also a big fire in the island of Pantelleria, which uh, went into the land owned by Armani, because Armani has this big chunk of land in Pantelleria and this uh, other island down in Sicily. It's not the Olean Islands, Pantelleria is on the lower side, it's on the oh. other side of the island. And uh, fortunately, they managed to stop this fire. But it was actually, in the case of Pantelleria, um, triggered by some some criminal act. It wasn't just a natural fire. Now we arson? don't know arson, arson. Yes, mm -hmm. and so I, I hope it's not arson also in Lipari, um, because that would be very sad. Yeah, well. Somebody said I would like your enlightening opinion. The Jack Person dying in an accident. Well, Andrea, just read my book. It's written on Invisible Master. If you know how to read in English, otherwise. Uh, you can wait for volume four in the Italian edition. <laughs> but that is uh, basically where you can find that kind of information. Okay, okay. Uh, we are, uh, of course. Get Rambo. <laughs> get Rambo, but before you get the Rambo, I would like uh, to also uh, show you something else because uh, um, in, uh, in Panama, there is people who, you know, they like going around in helicopters in Panama. But okay. yesterday something happened that was filmed by a crew on the helicopter, and the helicopter went down with the whole crew. And uh, of course, it's 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 uh, it's an incredible scene. I mean, uh, check out what happened, and uh, let's check it out together. Because there were fires, of course, and so they were kind of like patrolling the area. So these people were on their job, they're tranquil, you know, they were thinking everything is fine and dandy until the helicopter crashes. And they're on, on it and they're filming. So this is kind of incredible. Oh
I think it's incredible. I mean, they survived. Oh. They made it safe, guys. They made it safe. I don't know how, but they made it safe. This was the Leo Zagami show, Saturday, August the 20th of the year of the Lord 2022. Rambo, are you still willing? This is monkey, everybody. Yes, this is not monkey box, so this is monkey. Well, it kind of seems like the other monkey box because look, look, I mean, look at the back of this monkey. I mean, what does he have? Rambo, what did you do with this monkey? Rambo, what did you do with this monkey? Favorite monkey. Huh? Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Bye, Rambo. Let's dance. Everybody dance. Everybody dance. The Leo Zagami show will be back. Bruce, dance. 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 dancing. I, I feel it. Uh, we have I also feel your dance. We have also a squirrel, but the squirrel, Rambo, doesn't squirrel. like the squir <laughs> squirrel. squirrel as much as he likes the monkey. We also have a broke down otter. Oh yeah? We have a penguin. We have a penguin. But he doesn't like penguin. Mm. He is really digging into my dress with his paws. <laughs> I'm winning my dance. Leo and Christy! Why are you so wild? Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. So next Saturday ah, in seven out. days on oh Sunday. Uh, what's happened? <gasps> I put my button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. See you later. <laughs> From Palm Springs, California. That was the Leo Zagami show. <laughs> Next week, we'll be back on Facebook. We will have a new official the Leo Zagami show channel on YouTube. So please. Go and find it uh, on YouTube in the next couple of days. Uh, it's a new channel. The Leo Zagami Show will have a new channel before they remove uh, the official one. Hey, Rambo, what are you doing? Are you tip tapping? Are you dancing? He's dancing! Uh, that's it from Palm Springs.